to be. I'm not saying no challenging intersections where everything comes together at a culminating fashion won't appear to you. They will continue to appear. You continue to have beginnings of your chapters and endings of your chapters. Beginnings and endings, learnings and integration and expansion, etc. These waves of creation, of expansion and integration, expansion and integration, expansion and integration, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, they will always continue to occur, especially with the physical focus being so apparent to your consciousness right now, being here, in other words. However, what most people call a shitstorm, which is where everything has to go wrong, where everything you have built has to disappear or just taken away from you with no sign of anything else reappearing that's better, where everything just seems to continuously negatively create itself, that's the perfect way for your unconscious to show itself to your consciousness. Because what is it showing you? It's showing you that your definitions are negative to begin with. You have a set of negative definitions, a set of I'm unworthy of total bliss, I'm not capable of total bliss, this is just not the way the universe works. There is limitation, there is isolation. For everything good that happens to me, two bad things need to happen to me. No pain, no gain. All these beliefs are start to show up for you, which is a good sign. It means you're transcending them. If you were not transcending them, they would not show up to you because you would not have any context to understand them, and your higher self is not a cruel being. It does not feed you lessons you don't have the capacity to consciously take on. So if a shitstorm arises, it's a great compliment to your already present learning curve transcendence. Does that make sense? The shitter you're the storm, the more capable you have become. Does that make sense? So first of all, it's a compliment. And when you define the next coming, <laughs> the next upcoming shitstorm in that way, and you start seeing it as a beautiful cyclone instead of a shitstorm, and you see it as a bliss storm, then you're already at least halfway, if not 80 to 90 percent, there to extracting all the benefit that that bliss storm or cyclone is there to show you to begin with. The thing it wants to show you most is that you have control over how you define your circumstances. Now, if at the first inkling of the shitstorm arising, you start to immediately program yourself to define it in the most blissful way, you've already learned almost all lessons that it has to show you. And it will not be a shitstorm, it will actually turn out to be a bliss storm. What starts out as a shitstorm can be immediately turned around to become a bliss storm, depending on how you realize your freedom, and to what extent you realize you're free to define that moment. Yes, shitstorm appears in your old definitions, but in your new definitions, that's no longer a shitstorm. It's now amazingly appreciated and a sign of your ascendance. And so you're absolutely stoked at the sight of your shitstorm, which is now your bliss cyclone, and it will spin you into orbit. Whee! <laughs> so use your shitstorms wisely, so that they, in that fashion, will never have to show up because they won't be relevant for you to see anymore. They have been integrated, all benefit has been extracted and learned, which is, this is not a shitstorm, this is your own self talking to you, which is benign and blissful once you get that. And then it can start to communicate to you in, shall we say, lighter ways more enjoyable ways, less destructive, less chaotic, less random, less unconscious way. It can start to simply communicate to you. And now, at some point, you start to learn most of your lessons before they ever have to be made manifest. Most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. You start to learn on the level of imagination because you become snappier. You, because be you become more attentive because you start to see more how you communicate with yourself and that everything is an inseparable self-creation. So now at the first sight of a negative thought, you're already paying attention to what your vibration beyond that thought was. Why did I even have a negative thought? Oh, I must have had the conviction that there's a lack of money, or there's a lack of this, or there's a lack of... Ah, oh, awesome. Lack does not exist in the universal eye. So let me align myself with the universal eye, which is infinite abundance, infinite endless parallel realities. Anything can change in a second, in a nanosecond. Abundance enough for everyone. Ah, oh, thank you. Boom. Now you feel totally different about that same scenario. And you've learned before it has had to made, been manifest in terms of bankruptcy or anything like that, for example. Does that make sense? So you've paid attention to your vibratory state. Again and again, more and more, you will become a vibrational wanderer and not a situational wanderer. You start to master your vibration. 
not your situation. The quicker you learn, the more you keep it right here, right now, knowing that everything cycles through you, knowing that everything is up to you, knowing that everything is here to show you something, and everything is here to ask you something too. It's here to show you what you previously gave to it asking to you, and it is here to now ask to you, what do you wish to give me next, which I will show you in a minute. That's how creation works. What do you want to tell me next? I'll give it to you in a minute. Ah, you believe there's infinite abundance? Okay, one second. Ta-da! <laughs> how do you wish to respond to this? What is it reflecting? It's reflecting what you previously told me. What would you like? Now that you see the manifestation of what you previously told me, whether consciously or unconsciously, that's why many people are very successful because they have a few unconscious beliefs that are in alignment with the universe. What would you like to tell me next? What would you like for me to create for you next? And you go, oh, well, let's see. More infinite bliss. Okay, thank you. One second. Ta-da! And so on and on it goes. Now, if you do the common thing, which is the negative cycle, which is to respond to what is shown to you, hey, what do you think about this? This is what you told me yesterday or two minutes ago. What do you think about this? this is, I'm speaking as creation right now, but understand, I'm assuming. Creation is like, hello, here you go. This is what you told me to get for you two seconds ago, two minutes ago, two hours ago, two days ago, two years ago, two lifetimes ago, whatever. What is this showing you? Are you making it more conscious? Are you integrating what you see as a reflection of your unconscious beliefs? Are you making it more conscious and transforming it and aligning it in alignment with the universal way of seeing things? And what would you like me to get for you next? If you respond to that in a common way, for example, um, a funeral should be sad, which there's no indication that it should be. Where is the indication that it should be? The dead body is not suggesting that it's sad. It's not talking anymore anyway. And the wood is not suggesting it. The grave is not suggesting it. The flames are not suggesting it. The coffee, cheap coffee, is not suggesting it. Well, maybe the cheap coffee is suggesting it. But other than that, there's nothing inherent to that circumstance that suggests a funeral should be sad. You do. Your memory of your parents do. Your memory of your other people, your peers do. There's so much we bring to each creation asking us, hello, this is what you told me next time, a uh, last time. Learn from this, and now what would you like to see next? We so often unconsciously respond to that with beliefs that are, have never been our own. That's why they feel so heavy, it's because they're not ours. Anything you carry with you that's not yours feels heavy. So if you keep saying, well, yeah, it's showing you a funeral. What would you like to see next? Well, this is really sad. Okay, one second. Someone pushes over the body and it falls in the ground. It's like, <laughs> jaw dropping out. Well, how would you like to respond to this? And you go, well, this is terrible. Okay, one second. Your unknowing heavy uncle steps backwards and squashes the face. Oh, my God. How would you like to respond to this? Oh my God, I can't handle this. Okay. And you faint. That's the negative downward spiral. It's an exaggerated version of what's actually occurring to us on a day-to-day -day basis. If you become more aware of this, you become more in control of this by mastering your frequency, not your situation. Your frequency. Always respond to what shows up in the way you wishes to appear for it next, for it to appear next. If you want for that, that body to not be stepped on in the next moment when it already fell down, you have to be really excited about the fact that it fell down. Because then what you get is a really exciting reflection of that. Which may be that he wasn't dead at all. Start standing up and talking. Again. Anything's possible. Jesus did it, right? Why not you? Be really excited. 